This is the Samsung Galaxy S25 Ultra. It has the latest Snapdragon 8 Elite and it has a slightly overclocked clock on 4.47 GHz. Yeah, this is the Snapdragon 8 Elite for Galaxy. In this video, guys, I am going to run the Wildlife Extreme Stress Test 20 loops and I'm also going to measure the performance data with PerfDoc to analyze how much watts this thing is going to burn. Yesterday, I did some tests with Grid Legends and thanks to the help from Deep Tesh from Technation365, I was able to crank up the game settings, remove the FPS cap and turn off dynamic resolution and also up, get a high resolution. And I saw 20 watt max peak for just some seconds, which was just insane, guys. Um, nevertheless, I played three rounds, I did three laps and I got something like eight watts in general. But why is this important? Because we pretty much know that these phones can work until 41, 42, and we tested it also on the S24 Ultra. Now remember, there was a way on the S24 Ultra to use System Tuner and go to the Samsung Device Health Manager and completely disable the throttling. Now this doesn't really work on the S24 Ultra. So when we reach around 41, 42, the phone is going to throttle already. But what we can do in this video, we can use good guardians and go to thermal guardian and up the thermal threshold with two Celsius, which I hope will bring the phone's tolerance from 41 Celsius to 43. Originally with 41, you are already very close to get the phone to throttle a bit the performance and cool down. Now, hopefully with this, we're gonna be cranking a bit more. I'm gonna use adaptive brightness. I'm gonna go back inside the 3D mark and we are going to start the 20 minutes test. And guys, here in your top left corner, you're gonna be able to check the performance. So we have the FPS, we have the CPU, sadly no GPU here, but we can see, <laughs> wow, you can see, Sometimes we directly go to 21 watts. Also guys, as I've just started, let's just try to see how much we're gonna get. Yeah, 28.6. And let's see what happens at the end with PerfDoc and analyze the performance of the S25 Ultra with the stock setting only out with two Celsius from Thermal Guardian. So after only two rounds, we are at about 38.4. And you can see that the phone averages at like seven to eight watts. It started with 21, 22 watts, guys. Um, and thanks to some guys over in Telegram, who and Alex, I now know that actually the phone can go up to 24 watts, which is just insane. And of course, it brings a lot of questions around cooling. 24 watts is just a lot to have any tiny device like this without you know, any active cooling. So if the passive cooling is not good enough, this means you, of course, not gonna be able to utilize all that power. And I think this 3D Mark test also shows it cause right now, you know, I'm picking in the average somewhere to like seven, eight, maybe 10. So I'm averaging around like eight watts. And this is just around number three. When I did this test on my Xiaomi 15, the first time it survived, the second time it wasn't able to survive, but the Xiaomi 15 guys, Share me as a different idea with thermal management. It is able to run until 50 Celsius, but it's going to serve you until it dies. Samsung, on the contrary, they do have a quite different approach. I think way more conservative. They really don't want you to just be able to use the phone to the full potential. They will let you choose between a standard and light performance mode. But honestly, what I would have preferred here is to have something just that lets you unleash everything and, and maybe accept uh, the idea that you can probably degrade the battery performance because guys heat is the enemy for battery for display you can really do a bad things if you use your phone you know like over the hours with a lot of heat generation this is not great of course but on the contrary we have this Snapdragon 8 Lite we want to be able to play all the nice games you know like pushing the boundaries of 4k gaming on phones okay all right, not for gaming, but why not at least 1440 and of course 60 FPS and why not more? Nevertheless, guys, we are now in round number five. So let's just see, remember last time 38? 39.9. So I think we are now safe still from the zone when the phone will usually throttle being a Samsung. Remember 41, 42 is kind of like, yeah, it's getting too hot and they are trying to just keep the horses down a bit. Now, remember I've also upped uh, the thermal tolerance with two Celsius. So I just hope that the phone will operate with a better performance at 43 without, you know, thermal management to kicks in. 
And in round number six, I can see that the phone is starting to consume less and less. And we are at 41.6, which is about time for Samsung to kick in. Now, well, nine watts. And the FPS drop is also to be experienced. Later on, we are going to analyze the data with PerfDoc because PerfDoc, guys, is the tool I use by WeTest. The guys provided me some time that I can spend testing those phones. So really big thanks goes to WeTest and PerfDoc. If you wanna check this out, I'm gonna put a link down below in the video description. This thing here is WeTest PerfDoc. The way it works, you get an app on your computer, you can hook up your phone, it's going to sideload, install actually an APK, and this is how I get it. Else, any other option that I tried doesn't really work without root like Sense and like also Shizuku with Taco Stats, I bought this now. Now this is the only thing I can use without rooting uh, my phone. All right, we're starting round number nine, 41.7. So guys, I'm just thinking maybe the phone throttled down a bit. What I see right now in a real time of a perfect dock, which you can also see on the screen is the fact that it was able to maintain circa the same FPS over the last few rounds, but it started off so powerful in the first round and then of course yeah hold my horses down nevertheless we still have to go and do 11 rounds now you can understand samsung is just trying to prevent you the, of using the phone in a way they think it's inappropriate just getting you know the full performance which i don't think it's fair for power users because right now i'm just thinking yeah we're probably using almost like 60 60 percent of the performance so i don't really expect the the results at the end from the 20 rounds are going to be nice in terms of stability and you always know like this test you just get 20 loops then the 3d mark will take the highest loop and the lowest loop and then based on this uh, it's going to calculate the stability rating Round number 12, guys, the brightness, I'm on outer brightness, sealed there, didn't dim, but I can see that the FPS dropped a bit. You can also see this here. Now let's just check the temps, 42.1, guys. Now at this point of time, with my other phones, the China phones, you're gonna be here like 47, 48, so they're really, really using um, far less aggressive thermal management and will allow the phone to operate under higher heat without starting to throttle. And of course, this has some pros and cons. Pros, of course, is the fact that you're able to use more performance. Cons is, yeah, it's going to get very hot. And of course, at some times, it might just as well crash. So you can understand what Samsung is doing here. Again, I really would have wanted to have like a button or just a stock setting that will just like a real performance mode that will probably come with a form of acknowledgement. Hey, you know, you the user, when you press the button here, know that I'm not sure, probably you're getting um, no warranty on whatever you do, something like that. But you can understand Samsung being so big, they don't want to really do this. And so they kind of cap the phone's performance. And the thing is, guys, even with this, the Snapdragon 8 delay should be really very good. All right, because again, it's a very powerful chip and it's clocked um, to four dot for seven gigahertz. So even around like at five, six, seven watts, you should be able to get a pretty nice and stable gameplay. Approaching the round number 15 and we are now even below 20 FPS, so it's not going great. Starting around number 15, 42. And we're in round number 16 so far, the phone survives. 42.7 guys, okay? So from my memories, when I was doing this on the S24 and 3 Ultra, at this point we would have probably reached 44. So can we assume that even with the plus two Celsius on Thermal Guardian, can we assume that the Snapdragon 8 LED is working cooler? Yeah, you tell me. I'm just thinking maybe, maybe one to two Celsius cooler. 42.1, so I'm just thinking now the phone starts to tone down a bit. Round number 18, 42, so definitely I think uh, we're not able to get even to 43. So 42 and a bit more. And now we are in the last round, guys. 42.4, okay, one round to go, and then we'll have the complete picture. 
So here we are, the best loop score, rather impressive, 6801, but the lowest loop score is 3000 and almost 500, resulting into this stability rating of 51.3, which isn't ideal, guys. And again, this is calculated by taking the highest loop score versus the lowest loop score, and you pretty much got the idea. Now, we see a very gradual graph here. We started off very strong, so we kind of were going okay until round number five six seven and then you can see we're dropping 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 and starting loop number 13 we dropped below 4000 the lowest score was recorded in the last loop performance range this is compare frame rates from the best and the worst loop so you can pretty much see uh, we started off with 40 here we got a bit between 40 and 50 so yeah this is how it looks like we lost 30 percent of the battery from 81 to 68 percent and we went from 26 celsius to 43 so perhaps the plus two celsius uplift worked frame rate 14 was the lowest versus 49 the best if we just go on a custom chart and put the temperature here you can see guys this is the battery right this here is the frame rate and of course this is uh, the temperature now let's just jump and see the data that we were able to record with perfdoc so here we are with the end result. The average FPS for these 20 rounds was 25.3. The average power consumption was 6.8 watts, guys. This is the data that we were able to capture. Now, in terms of FPS, you can see initially we were getting 45, 32. So it's a bit different as to what 3D Mark reports it, but it's gradual and of course it gradually goes down. So when we started off with something like 46 FPS, at the round number 20 at the end, we are doing 23. Okay, but what I do like is that it's kind of gradual. So it means that at some point when we just get a lot of heat and heat is actually here, right? You can see that the phone tries to maintain the performance, tries to cool down by then limiting the performance. This thing here is the G temp for a few seconds, very, very high, then gradually like this, so around 75. And then from here, guys, it only went down and down. And this down below is the battery temp. So it increased from 27 when we started the test to at the end 43. But do you see what happens when these phones run on like full performance? It is absolutely frying, guys. And the performance, we can see it here. This is here, guys, starting over with 16, you know, 13, 14. And I think here, you know, the peaks, uh, 14, 18 watts, okay? So 18 watts. And then you can just see like this performance is not sustainable. This is just peak. This is only for almost like a half a minute, 40 seconds. Then from here, we immediately go down and limit it to like eight, 10 watts, okay, for a few rounds. Then we do like five to six watts. And then at the end, guys, yeah, you can just see it goes down and down. But okay, average performance, almost seven watts, guys with an average FPS of 25.3 and a stability rating of 51%. So let me know what you think down below, guys, and let's continue testing the S25 Ultra.